Let me just bring you this. The animal campaigning group PETA has sparked a debate on speciesism after it warned that using words like chicken to describe a coward was an anti-animal slur. Uh, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, that's PETA, has called on its Twitter followers to reject supremacist language that degrades animals by applying negative human traits to certain species. The group wrote, words can create a more inclusive world or perpetuate oppression. Calling someone an animal as an insult reinforces the myth that humans are superior to other animals and justified in violating them. Let's speak with Jennifer White from Peter. Jennifer, afternoon to you. Hi, thanks so much for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. This isn't real, is it? This story I just read out. I mean, if you call somebody a chicken or you know, a pig, whatever, cow, is that's animalism and an animal slur. What's going on here? Well, of course, we often call people chicken, um, pig or a rat as insults. And, you know, this is usually done to imply that they're ugly, they're stupid or they're sneaky. Um, and when we do this, it really is a form of bullying that can be hurtful to humans. Um, but on the flip side, it also belittles other species as well, who are completely undeserving of being viewed in such a negative light. Uh, and that's really what Peter wanted to highlight in this tweet. Hmm. I mean, have you had complaints from chickens or pigs or cows well of course we're not saying that the animals are offended by the words that human use uh, and i think you probably know that too um but we're talking about using language that is harmful and that it's inaccurate and it perpetuates this false idea that some species are inferior and that they don't deserve respect and that's what needs to change um you know for example if i were to come on air and call you a rat you know you probably wouldn't be too happy with me um but we really should think about why that is um, because rats are intelligent, they're sociable, um, they're playful as well. So And they spread you know, the bubonic really... plague. But other than that, I mean, they're a beautiful creature, aren't they? Well, you know, researchers actually found out that a hungry rat will I share know, their food with another hungry I, rat. Listen, I love a um, rat, but if somebody uses the term you're a rat and somebody uses the term you're a snake, I mean, come on, are we really going to get upset about that? Well, you know, another example is when people describe um, people who are out of control or who are being aggressive as acting like an animal. Um, but when you think about it, humans are the only ones who wage wars against members of their own species. So again, it doesn't make sense to use these phrases because they're not truthful and they're disparaging to animals as well. So all we're asking people to do is use the words that actually reflect what we mean. Or of course, even better, <laughs> we're reminding people that we don't have to use insults. We can all be a little bit kinder to each other have you uh, never watched something... have you never watched meerkat manor <laughs> i haven't actually watched meerkat manor but i do love meerkats so. i mean well who doesn't love a meerkat meerkat manor that's gladiatorial i mean these things there's all manner of stuff going on there there's all sorts of battles and territory i mean they're incredibly territorial animals aren't they i mean they do think they, they have sex in public apart from anything else they poop in bushes they do all manner of things that we don't do because we've kind of civilized ourselves into a different... I'm sure once upon a time well, we did that when we had know, little tails We're, we're a completely different species and of course well, right, that's you know, the there point. are plenty plenty of things that humans do um, you know, that animals can and vice versa and you know, if you sit down and watch a David Attenborough documentary, yeah. you can see some of the incredible things that animals are capable of that humans would only dream of. You know, we can't fly. Um, you know, we don't swim upstream to find our homes like salmon true. do. Um, so comparing these traits of yeah, other but, species, it's true. completely irrelevant. Yes, but long can't fly either, can they? I mean, there's, you know, there's a, there's a hierarchy, isn't there? It's not that, you know, we are morally more entitled to planet Earth than uh, a brown bear. But in the, the hierarchical system of what makes this planet tick, uh, I'm not seeing many duck-billed platypuses innovate or pitch up on Dragon's Den with the next big scientific idea. Humans do that because well, we are, course, we are up the hierarchical chain, they, aren't we? They need to have. But what we're talking about is, uh, is equality and about just thinking about the words and the phrases that we use um, and thinking about how that reflects our own beliefs. And we can all break free of sort of using this old fashioned, outdated language that belittles other animals and just use the words that are already existing. You know, just call someone a coward if you need to call someone a coward, but don't bring chickens into this. You know, they've got absolutely nothing to, to do with these But it's a chicken, isn't it? I mean, it's not, it's, it, it doesn't matter, does it? We don't somehow... But it's how, so 
words so I can understand you know why you think these phrases might be harmless they are just words but we do also know that words matter you know they shape our ideas they shape our behaviors um you know we know that pigs are super intelligent so if we refer to people uh, with very high IQs as being as smart as a pig you know we might see people thinking twice when they reach for that bacon sandwich because the perception of that animal is completely different to what we currently understand when people use that word so it's all about making small changes that could have very big impacts in the long run. About our perception then of our fellow beasts? Fellow animals, yes. Is beasts bad as well? I thought that was all right. Well, it's just nice to, you know, call them living beings um, or sentient animals as well. But, you know, of course, beast is fine if that's what you want to use. What about a graffalo? They're a beast, aren't they? Well, they're a mythical beast, of course, what? but we, w we wouldn't want you I watched it the other day with my either. little kid. I thought that was a documentary. <laughs> um, listen, Jennifer, lovely to have you on. Thank you. Jennifer White is from PETA, the animal organisation. Ricky, can you get my dentures? I want to eat my own face. Goodness me. Don't call somebody a chicken. Don't call somebody a sloth was also on the list as well. Did anybody ever, if you were having a row with somebody, imagine having a big old row in a pub. Somebody spilled your pint and there you were just about to, you know, sup your first bit of ale after a hard working win. Somebody deliberately went past you. You don't see many of those kind of, you don't see Danny Dyer in those films going, you dirty sloth. That never happened, did it? Nobody says sloth ever. I don't think. Uh, well, you heard it there. We bring you all sorts on this programme, don't we?